Ciao, co. Yasas. Welcome back to Adventures in Language. I'm your guide, Caitlin. In this episode of the Science Behind Language Learning, we're asking the question: Are some people just better at learning languages? Specifically, we'll talk about something known as language aptitude. What is language aptitude? How do you measure it? And how important is it for language learning success? Are you ready? Let's get started. Today's video is the first of several about the individual factors that influence language learning. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and be the first to know when new videos come out. Have you ever noticed that some people just seem to have a knack for learning foreign languages? For years, second language acquisition researchers have been trying to understand whether and why some people are naturally better at learning new languages. And while there isn't one definitive answer to this question, one strong contender is something known as language aptitude. Put simply, language aptitude is the capacity to learn another language. Of course, this doesn't mean that some people are able to learn languages and others aren't. Anyone can learn a language if they put their mind to it. Instead, language aptitude has to do with your potential to do really well in language learning. Basically, how fast you can learn and how fluently you'll be able to speak. So people who fall on the higher end of the language aptitude scale should be good at learning languages, while people with lower aptitude might find language learning more challenging. And the science supports this. Research has shown that aptitude is one of the best predictors of language learning success. Okay, well, that sounds reasonable enough, but what is language aptitude exactly and how do you measure it? When it comes down to it, language aptitude is a little hard to define because it's not just one single ability. It's actually made up of a whole bunch of different cognitive skills that are important for succeeding in different areas of language learning. For example, a new language is probably going to have lots of sounds you aren't familiar with, so it helps if you're able to recognize those sounds, tell them apart, and remember them so you can produce them in the future. A new language is also going to have lots and lots of new words, so you may have a leg up if you're good at connecting the written and spoken forms of words and memorizing what they mean. And since vocabulary learning isn't really just about studying flashcards, you might get a learning boost if you're good at picking these words out from a continuous stream of speech. Now, we also know that words go together according to specific patterns, and that the way a word looks or sounds might change depending on where it appears in a sentence or what role it plays. In other words, a new language has grammar, and that grammar is not always straightforward. So if you're good at analyzing patterns and correctly applying them in novel situations, grammar learning might come easy to you. Even your ability to handle a lot of information all at once and to do so quickly is key for language learning. So, like I said, a lot goes into learning a language, and it helps to be good in all of these areas. But how do you know if you're someone with high language aptitude? Well, over the years, SLA researchers have come up with more than a few ways to measure language aptitude. One of the oldest and most widely used tests is the Modern Language Aptitude Test, or MLAT for short. The MLAT was developed in the early 1960s by Harvard psychologist John Carroll with funding from the U.S. government. In the MLAT, Test takers are asked to do things like tell new sounds apart, learn numbers in a made-up language, and memorize translations of new words. Even first language abilities come into play, as test takers are asked to identify the grammatical roles of words in sentences, as well as identify words that are missing several letters or spelled in a kind of funny way. The tasks on the MLAT represent many of the cognitive abilities I've already mentioned. We've actually created some examples for you, so look out for them in the description if you're curious. Research with the MLAT has shown that it's really good at predicting things like a student's grade or how much grammar they can learn in a language course. One drawback with the test is that it has mostly been used with adults studying in foreign language contexts, like a native speaker of English studying Italian at an American university. Newer tests have been developed in an attempt to better estimate the aptitude of learners at different ages, like children and teenagers, or those studying under different learning conditions. Take, for example, the Canal F. This test guides test takers through the process of learning an invented language and features tasks which resemble what a learner might encounter when studying in a foreign country. 
For example, learning the meaning of new words from context instead of via translations. Because of this, scores on this test might better reflect the potential for success in the wild, like study abroad or immersion. Something that's really interesting is that different tests may also give you a better idea about your potential to learn different languages. For example, if you're curious about your ability to learn an easy language like Spanish or Portuguese, then the MLAT might be the way to go. But if you're looking to learn a harder language like Arabic or Chinese, then a test like the High Level Language Aptitude Battery, or HiLab, which was developed to identify government workers who have the potential to reach advanced proficiency, might give you a better sense of your learning potential. Unfortunately, most existing language aptitude tests, including the MLAT and the HiLab, are not freely available for public use. Recognizing this, researchers at Swansea University created the LAMA series of aptitude tests which are freely available for anyone to use and measure similar abilities as the MLAT. Overall, we can say that there have been quite a few attempts to measure language aptitude and that different tests may be more or less appropriate for different learning situations. But it's important to point out that a high score on an aptitude test doesn't guarantee that you'll become fluent in another language. There's a difference between having a high potential for learning a language and actually learning it. This is where other factors come in. For instance, even if you have similar language aptitude to someone else, you might end up learning more simply because you're more motivated. Likewise, you might learn a language faster because it's similar to your first language. You could also have an advantage because you've developed good strategies and habits for learning additional languages, or because you're able to just hold a lot of things in your short-term memory. You may even be a better language learner because you already know a lot of languages. The bottom line is that aptitude is just one of many factors that can predict language learning success, and there are still lots of open questions. For example, is aptitude a stable trait or can it increase over time or with experience, like if you study a lot of languages or take a few linguistics classes? Is the role of aptitude different depending on how a language is learned, for example in implicit versus explicit learning conditions? How do we know that aptitude isn't just general intelligence. Let's recap what we've talked about today. Number one, language aptitude is the capacity to learn a new language. Anyone can learn a language, but people who have high aptitude have the potential to be particularly good at it. Number two, language aptitude is kind of tough to define and measure, which makes sense when you think about just how much goes into learning a new language. Rather than one specific ability, researchers think that aptitude is made up of several components notably the ability to hear and remember new sounds, the ability to pick up on patterns, and different aspects of memory. Number three, the MLAT is the oldest and most widely used aptitude test and does a pretty good job at predicting language learning success. Over the years, other tests have been created to study aptitude for different age groups in different contexts and with a focus on different skills. And number four, High aptitude does not guarantee language learning success. Even low aptitude learners can reach high proficiency in a language. There are so many factors that go into language learning and aptitude is just one of them. Overall, we can say that language aptitude is a fascinating, complex, and important piece of the puzzle when it comes to understanding the incredible variability among second language learners. If you like this video and you want to stay tuned for more videos about the science behind language learning, make sure you subscribe to our channel. If there's a topic that you want to learn more about, tell us about it in the comments. Be sure to check out the description for this video for some free materials on language aptitude, including a quiz where you can find out how you perform on some classic aptitude test questions. Thanks for watching. Ciao ne, tala ne. Hey there, me again. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to get your free goodies, which you can access from the link right here on the screen. In our next video, we'll be talking about how the way our minds work influences language learning. If you want to be the first to know when that video goes live, ring that notification bell. In the meantime, you can catch up on our existing videos right here. We'll see you next time on the science behind language learning.